name is Peter. Welcome back to the workshop here at Sunny Beaches. One of the more common complaints or problems that people have with the Minimax CU300 is that it won't run. <laughs> it just won't start. You turn the main on switch on and nothing happens. Uh, so uh, there's some obvious things to check right away. Is the machine plugged in? Are all the emergency stop buttons out uh, in the run position? Are all the doors and covers that are supposed to be closed, closed? Um, so that takes only a few seconds to check. But if you get through all that and the machine still won't start, uh, then you've got something of a mystery on your hands. And it's possible, maybe even likely, that one of your safety switches is stuck in the open position. Uh, there's a number of safety switches uh, and they're all wired in series so that uh, any one switch being open will depower that circuit and if that circuit doesn't have power then the main uh, on-off switch is, is basically uh, stuck in the off position. It won't power up the machine. Uh, so. Um, we're going to cover the location of uh, the, the safety switches on the machine. Keep in mind, this is a 2003 vintage machine. Uh, my guess is most of this has remained constant over a broad number of years, but uh, particularly in the case of newer machines where the jointer tables rotate up as a one unit, there must have been some change to uh, the, the safety switches for that. Um, but let's go through the, what we can find. Of course, there are the three emergency stop buttons. Uh, one on the table saw side, one on the jointer planer side, and one on the front of the machine. Moving on to uh, the slightly less obvious, uh, <laughs> we. Uh, the table saw blade cover has one underneath this arm, right down in here. Uh, the, the table saw blade has been rotated 45 degrees uh, in this case, uh, which does make it a little easier to see. And behind the door uh, that gives you access to the shaper motor, on the back of the machine, there's a switch that's right in here. So that's not too hard to find. So that brings us uh, around to the jointer where things are much less obvious. There's actually three different mechanisms uh, involved here. Uh, if either the in-feed or out-feed table is rotated up, uh, the saw won't run until uh, the planer safety hood is, is also raised. Um, and I'll show you what I've been able to find out about where those switches are and how they work. So the in-feed and out-feed table have um, similar mechanisms that kept me stumped for years. Um, but it basically involves this rod here. Um, what's not obvious is that this rod goes all the way through the hinge piece here and actually comes to rest against this bit of the casting. And this is not regularly shaped, so it has the effect of a cam. Uh, and so when the table is rotated up, it depresses the lever. Actually, I'm not sure which way depresses it, <laughs> come to think of it. Uh, but uh, it will be raised and lowered, um, that rod will, uh, when the table is raised and lowered. Well, that's all well and good, but where's the actual mechanism? Uh, I'll show you what I found, but you're not going to like it. So we're back at the back of the machine near the infeed table, looking through the shaper door and way up. Sorry, I don't have a uh, tripod that will work for this, but way up in here. Uh, that's, well, the other end of that rod, and it's uh, partially hidden uh, behind this cog, 
that makes it hard to figure out uh, how it works and what it does. Um, but <laughs> but there it is. So we've removed a cover from the front of the machine, and next we're going to peer through that. So this is why I had the um, table saw tilted at 45 degrees, because otherwise the table saw motor obscures this view. So this appears to be the actual switch um, <clears throat> for the whole jointer planer safety mechanism. Uh, it's, um, I don't find any other wires, so whatever the connection is between the infeed table switch that we just saw, and here we have the um, the plunger rod for the outfeed table and some kind of mechanism for the uh, planer hood, um, and they come to this uh, all all this one spot somehow. Um, we'll try rotating things and see what happens. First, we'll raise and lower the planer hood. Next, we'll lower and raise the outfeed table. Uh, there's a cover that's usually in place over this area between the table saw table and the jointer planer tables. Um, and I took it off hoping I could get some better access to some of this, but unfortunately, you can't. Uh, there is a place way down uh, closer to you where you can see a little bar that's a part of the mechanism. Um, and you can press on that. Um, but you can't really see anything else and you can't get as much as a finger down in there. So all in all, that's a little depressing, really. Uh, it's been suggested that uh, for some maintenance activity, really the only way to go about it is to lift the machine off the floor so you can access the inside from underneath. And, and maybe uh, that would be the case um, if you needed to uh, work on the joints or planar micro switches. Um, now, <clears throat> I actually got into this subject because I was having uh, kind of the opposite problem. Uh, all of a sudden, um, none of my safety switches had any effect on the machine. Um, the, the machine would run no matter what cover was open, what door was open, what emergency stop button was pushed, it, it, would, uh, <laughs> it would just run. So the only way to turn it off was to come back to the main on-off switch. So I did a little poking around uh, to try to figure that out. Uh, it's probably not uh, as aggravating as having it not being able to start, but you know it's not safe. Um, so I'll show you uh, what further I found uh, in investigating this problem. Related to all of the other uh, stops um, that, that we've shown, uh, there are a couple more that are um, related, but it's not obvious that they're related, uh, or it wasn't until I started to have my problem. One is that the main function selection switch, uh, of course, has the three positions for the table saw, the jointer planer, and uh, the shaper, and it has an off position between each of those two positions. So to go from the table saw to the shaper, for instance, you'd go to there, which would turn the machine off if it had been running, and then there. Um, but just doing that um, shouldn't be enough to start the shaper motor. You had, if this had been on, um, coming to here would have turned the table saw motor off, but coming to here would not turn the shaper on. You need to come back here and turn it off and back on again. Um, but that also um, stopped working correctly when I had my problem. And there's a similar mechanism here with uh, the, the shaper motor where you can reverse the direction. If you, go, you have to go through the middle, which is an off position, and again, you would have to stop and restart. Uh, you can't just go directly from one to the other, and that also stopped working correctly. So uh, clearly all of these things are uh, related to each other in some manner. 
So uh, the next thing I did was to take this panel off and see what I could see in there. So initially I didn't see anything, and then I noticed that this component here has become separated from this component. This is the main switch. It's uh, the, the main rotating on-off switch. Um, and uh, about a year ago, I replaced this. Uh, it started to buzz, and I thought that probably meant it was going to uh, fail imminently. Uh, so I managed to figure out what it was and order a new one and installed it, but obviously didn't get it installed quite correctly. Um, it, it should be seated. There's little tabs. Uh, Well, I can't get it from this angle, but but that should be snapped into the other uh, piece, the main piece. And when I did that, uh, everything started working properly again. So this is obviously is uh, the linchpin of the whole uh, safety circuit. Okay, so our safety component uh, is back where it should be. Um, and uh, I've turned on p power to the machine. And there's a couple things um, I've noticed about it. Uh, one is that it buzzes slightly. Uh, the one I replaced was buzzing much louder than that, but uh, uh, this one has a, a faint hum uh, when all of the switches and doors and things are in the right position so the machine is ready to run. Uh, the other thing is uh, taking a multimeter and picking up a ground on that nut there and putting the probe into the top side I get 131 volts across there. Uh, so if you can't pick up any uh, voltage, um, for instance, if we throw that stop switch uh, and the humming stopped, I don't know if you can hear that, but also uh, I get I get nothing. So uh, that's what I know about that. So that's everything I've managed to learn about safety circuits and switches here on the Minimax CU300. Um, I'm sorry the news wasn't any better, but if you ever have a problem with your safety circuit, uh, hopefully this will at least get you uh, started in resolving it. Uh, so uh, best of luck and thanks for watching.